फ्रेंड्स वी आर गोइंग टू सी द कम्प्लीट स्टोरी ऑफ सीकल सेल एनीमिया टूडे सीकल सेल एनीमिया इज एन इनहेरिटेड डिजीज ऑफ द आर बी सी विच टर्न्स अ हेल्दी लुकिंग बाई कनकेव आर बी सी इन टू अब नॉर्मल सीकल शेप्ड आर बी सी विच कैन कॉज ब्लड वेसल ऑक्लूशन ड्यू टू देयर ग्लोई नेचर विच विल लीड इन टू टिशू इन्फॉक्शन टिशू इन्फॉक्शन कैन कॉज पेन स्वेलिंग and so many other symptoms let's see what causes sickle cell anemia chapter 1 synthesis of hemoglobin s erythroblast nucleus is shown here we are seeing all the chromosomes we are scanning them a uh a -uh. chromosome number 11 is getting affected this green tangle portion portion is the mutated beta gene this will be transcribed into messenger rna which will be abnormal one this mutated mrna will float into the nucleus come out of the nucleus membrane now it is floating into cytosol when it will meet ribosome ribosome will translate into bases and then into amino acid so this is how beta s globin protein is synthesized two beta s will combine with two alpha and this is how formation of tetrameric globin protein is happening here now they are going to combine with the iron there is a synthesis of heme group and at the end complete hemoglobin is synthesized here which will be taking up oxygen in dpg form let's make notes formation of hemoglobin s during erythropoiesis let's visit nucleus of the erythroblast which is having chromosome number 11 inside chromosome number 11 there is a beta gene in the sixth position of the beta gene there is a codon called ctc which is coding for the glutamic acid but in sickle cell anemia there is a mutation called point mutation this point mutation is missense type of point mutation whenever there is a missense type of point mutation something is getting replaced by something else here ctc is getting replaced by cac so if you see actually there is a replacement of t by a thymidine by adenosine so instead of glutamic acid cac will be coding valine this is how formation of hbs occur but what is the problem with hemoglobin s how does the sickling occur chapter 2 mechanism of sickling healthy hemoglobin accepts four oxy molecule in arterial blood and then release it at cellular level mutant hemoglobin which is hbs also does the same problem arise in venous blood or deoxy form in deoxy form hbs is less soluble hence they hold each other hands tight and form polymer known as polymerization of hbs the sickling happens when the polymer of hbs pierces the membrane modify it and convert it into fragile less flexible sickle shaped rbc which is causing sickle cell anemia so let's make the notes of mechanism of sickling hemoglobin a is a tetramer consist of 2 alpha and 2 beta chains in oxy form which occurs in the arterial blood they will accept four molecule of oxygen and will be converted into oxy hemoglobin a in deoxy form which occurs in venous blood they will be releasing all these four molecules so now only 2 alpha and 2 beta is remaining there is a no oxygen this is deoxy form of the hemoglobin s and good news is that it is soluble into the cytoplasm the story of hemoglobin s is little different this is also a tetramer 2 alpha 2 beta but beta is mutated 
they will also accept 4 molecules of oxygen in the oxy blood. So there is no problem in the arterial blood. In the venous blood it will convert into deoxyform. Deoxyform is dangerous because the sticky patch of the beta ch uh, chain will be exposed here. This sticky patch is due to hydrophobic valine amino acid. This hydrophobic valine amino acid will cause formation of a long polymer of HBS. Due to polymerization, this hemoglobin will precipitate and precipitation is occurring into the venous capillaries. This is the RBC. These are long polymers of the hemoglobin S. They are piercing the red cell membrane and RBC is transformed here into sequel cell RBC. During this, calcium is coming in, potassium and water is effluxed from the cell. This is how a sequel shape RBC is formed. But what is the problem with the sequel RBC? Why don't we like them? In oxy blood they are fine, in deoxy blood there is a sickling and the same cycle will be getting repeated again and again whenever they will enter from oxy to deoxy. Due to this repeated cycle finally there will be permanent damage to the membrane because we are piercing them in every cycle. Once the RBC is permanently damaged, a spleen will come into the action. Yes, it is the graveyard of the damaged RBC. It's going to remove all the damaged RBC. Premature destruction of the RBC will cause hemolytic anemia, which is occurring in the extravascular tissue. That's why it's an extravascular hemolytic anemia. And the feature of extravascular hemolytic anemia are yes, very important joints, hepatosplenomegaly, and there are other features. But yes, there is a twist. The twist is vaso-occlusive crisis. What is that? Remember friends, the sequel shape RBC has increased expression of adhesion molecule. It makes RBC very much sticky, gluey. Plus, there is a decreased flexibility. Because of these two features, whenever the RBC will cross the venous blood, there will be phenomena of vaso-occlusion. When there is a vaso occlusion, it will lead to the ischemia or decreased blood supply, which will be leading to hypoxia. Due to hypoxia, there will be tissue damage, will be presented to us as a pain, swelling, and there will be so many other features. Clinical feature of this sickle cell anemia is mainly due to vaso-occlusive crisis more than its hemolytic feature. Due to vaso-occlusion, the most common clinical feature is ductilitis. What is ductilitis? Yes, it is shown here. It's a swollen, painful, tender joints of the hands and the feet, basically small joints. So a child with ductilitis, you must think of sickle cell anemia. Second image, fish mouth vertebra. If you com compare the end plate of the upper and lower vertebra, in between you will find a structure like a fish mouth. This is due to end plate compression. Gross of the autosplenectomy, which occurs due to repeated cycle of thrombosis and fibrosis. So in the beginning there can be splenomegaly, but at the end of the disease in the you know in the long term complication is going to be autosplenectomy small fibrotic spleen can you appreciate the sequeled rbc in the peripheral smear here so let's sum up clinical features of the sequel cell anemia first and foremost is the bone involvement most common clinical feature is ductilitis which is recurrent pain and swelling in the small joints of hands and foot this is the most common clinical feature must know for your entrance second is osteomyelitis which is an infection of the bone overall most common cause of osteomyelitis is stiff but here in sickle cell anemia it is salmonella 
in normal population it is a staph aureus but in sequel cell anemia it is salmonella which is a gram negative organism you must remember antibiotic will be different here vertebra will be converted into fish mouth vertebra this is the area you have to look for okay this is the presentation known as fish mouth vertebra skull involvement again very very important for image base and mcq direct mcq if you see the outer and inner table what you will find is trabeculae which are perpendicular to the inner table this is known as crew cut appearance or hair on an appearance which is usually seen in the hemolytic anemia which is affecting since childhood what happens to spleen there are lots of mcqs which is related to spleen and sequel cell anemia first most important mcq is formation of gamma gandhi body this can be appreciated sometimes in cross but most importantly it is a feature of microscopy what you see this dot dot structure which will be surrounded by hemorrhage this is a gamma gandhi body the pathogenetic mechanism is that due to chronic venous congestion in the sequel cell anemia rbc will squeeze out burst out from the small capillaries of the spleen this extra visited rbc will be degraded and finally hemosiderin will be accumulated in a lesion there is a accumulation of hemosiderin which will be giving brown color to the lesion iron hemosiderin these are brown pigments and this lesion will be surrounded by pink colored fibrosis hemosiderin and later on there is a calcium deposition surrounded by fibrosis remember hemosiderin calcium surrounded by fibrosis is known as ggb gamma gandhi body autosplenectomy what is autosplenectomy small fibrotic spleen which is a long term complication of sickle cell anemia this occurs due to repeated attack of thrombosis followed by fibrosis if the spleen of the patient is gone either iatrogenetically or due to autosplenectomy in the rbc you will see this a small blue dot known as howell jolly body remember howell jolly body is seen whenever spleen is removed iatrogenetically or due to disease in a patient third important feature sequestration crisis which is the most severe complication of sequel cell anemia what happens is that the large amount of blood is pushed into the spleen which leads to massive splenomegaly due to enlarged spleen there will be acute abdominal pain which will be localized to the upper left quadrant all the blood is gone to spleen so blood pressure will be going down there will be hypotension patient will feel dizzy so in a known case of sequel cell anemia if there is a hypotension massive splenomegaly abdominal pain think of sequestration crisis which is an emergency you have to give blood transfusion within 4 hours otherwise you may lose the patient sequestration crisis the most severe complication of the sequel cell anemia gamma gandhi body very very important for exam autosplenectomy again very important howell jolly body low microscopic view of the gamma gandhi body if you can appreciate the brown lesion in between yes this is the hemosiderin and the black are the calcium hemosiderin calcium surround, surrounded by all the pink areas those are fibrosis remember the iron present in gamma gandhi body is calcium metal present is iron another image crew cut appearance or hair on end appearance the first diagnosis of this image is beta thalassemia second will be sequel cell anemia and third can be any hemolytic disease present since childhood 
कैन यू अप्रिशिएट द स्पाइकी अपीयरेंस ऑफ द स्कल बोन दिस इज नोन एज क्रिकट अपीयरेंस This is a slide showing the most important points of sequel cell anemia. For example, it is due to point mutation previously asked. Missense type of point mutation. Which amino acid goes? Glutamate goes. This is never seen due to deletion. And there are many more MCQs written here in the slide. You have to pause the video, read them carefully. We have discussed all of them in the previous discussion. For example, not seen in SCA is ring cytoblast. Most common symptom is due to vessel occlusion. The most common clinical feature is shown here, which is tectilitis. But the most severe or fatal complication is sequestration crisis, which is due to sequestration of blood in spleen. Osteomyelitis is due to salmonella in SCA patient, but in normal population it is due to staph aureus. Sickling, sickling is affected most importantly due to concentration of HBS and there are many more important MCQs to come. You have, must read them, mug up them because they have been asked in previous examination. Remember, electrophoresis slide of the sequel cell trait will be showing two bands in the lower image two bands are shown so two for the trait in the case of hplc which is shown by the graph if you have two peaks it can be sickle cell trait what happens during electrophoresis what is seen in the peripheral smear and these are many other mcqs of the sickle cell anemia you have to pause the video note them down and this is how you can complete the sequel cell anemia chapter in toto a very very important high ill topic you must revise it before the examination here we have discussed all the mcqs which are asked in previous examinations thank you all